Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Building Big with City Skylines, episode 48. And we're starting a new city. We talked about this at the end of the last episode. We kind of reached a certain point where there were a number of different things at play that were making it a little bit difficult to move forward and kind of frustrating when the entire sectors were just like, nope, we're not working properly because uh, there's a problem. And everything we did to fix it kind of maybe would fix it for the short term and then the problem would come right back. It's very strange. So we're going to try and focus on uh, some of the things that we know went wrong and do a better job of protecting ourselves against them. One of the things that I wanted to do is get everything kind of up to speed as quickly as possible. So this is why we're going to do kind of a ghetto time lapse. We're going to take a speedy look at the very beginnings of the city so that you can see everything is going into place. We're not using any kind of crazy um, strategies. We're not using any mods. We're not using anything really except for roads and zones and service buildings. I want to get up to speed as fast as possible. One of the things that I noticed that I completely forgot about uh, is things like the different roads that we like to use, uh, including, I think, highways at the very start, are not available right away. You have to wait a little while before you get those things. Uh, roads with grass, roads with trees, again, not available at the very beginning. You have to get to a certain point and they're unlocked, which was kind of sad a, a little bit because I had actually made a stamp that I wanted to try out for a completely modular industrial zone that I can't use until we unlock the, uh, the, the roads with trees. So that's something to look forward to. I don't really necessarily mind if what I'm building now gets completely bulldozed before the city even hits like 25k. As long as we get everything that we need to continue on with, with what we were hoping to do which is learn a little bit from our past mistakes uh, Sometimes it's a little bit easier to start fresh than have to go back and change everything, but I feel like I made a pretty reasonable effort with the last city to go back and try and fix things before making the decision that it would be better off to just start over. Um, you know, I read various different forums, places, people talk about things, and one of the things that I notice is very common with this game is people start many cities and then they abandon them very quickly and then they start another and they and then for them to finally grow a city to a certain size is a substantial accomplishment because of all the cities that didn't make it anywhere near that, which is fine. I mean, it's it's their game, it's their dime. They bought the, the license to play the game. They can play it how they want to. Um, but for us to get our first city to 100,000 people before we decided that we could take some of the things that we learned and start over and maybe have a, a, a even bigger result next time around, uh, I, I think we did all right. So. The main thing here is I'm kind of responding to what the city wants in terms of service buildings and all those other things as the city says that they want them. And I'm kind of hoping to get by with the least amount possible, to be completely honest, until we get to the point where we've got all the roads that we want, we have access to the services, and we can kind of approach things from the point of view of this is what I want to do now, so that's what we're going to do. I can say uh, by about the, the time this this video ends, we'll be at the point where I was feeling like I was my income was finally to the reasonable level where I didn't have to spend all my time waiting around for uh, money to come in before I could do the next thing that I wanted to but it's still very very early with the, the city that doesn't last very long you can easily spend everything that you've got uh, very very quickly so we're trying to maintain a bit of a balance so that we can add what we need when we need it without having to sit around and wait for things to happen I'm not liking these wind turbines I have to say we used them in the last city because it was you know the option that we chose to provide power for the early you know going then we built a hydro dam that really was just a waste of money <laughs> it never really did perform up to my expectations and then we switched over to solar which is just you know not a bad thing at all you can see we're moving on up just a little bit here we get to these different overlays that show you know red buildings because they don't have uh, education they don't have garbage collection they don't have parks they don't have all these things trying to you know kind of keep a lid on my enthusiasm to go and just plaster things all over because sometimes just hearing that massive spree of dings that indicate um, buildings are upgrading is like 90 percent of the satisfaction but again i've got some ideas that i want to be working on that will happen once we get 
uh, the, the infrastructure that we don't have access to right now. So there's a few things that I wanted to keep in mind throughout this. One is obviously traffic. Uh, traffic was one thing that I enjoyed working on in the past city and had some success with. There were still opportunities all over the city that we could have improved traffic flow and done a better job here and there. But in terms of things actually moving along uh, and handling the demand that the city was creating, I, th I thought we did all right. But there are certain things that I wanted to <laughs> see because I decided I wanted to have a farm area I, I said this is the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna have a farm area we're gonna as soon as we have the option to create districts and assign specialized industry to them that's exactly what we're gonna do when to start farms and I completely forgot that you can't just place a farm anywhere you have to actually have um, fertile land and if the industrial area isn't on fertile land it doesn't do so well as a farm <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we'll go back and correct that as soon as we realize the nature of our mistake. Again, it's not that big of a deal because the industrial area for sure are going to be putting these little modular bubbles that we can use to uh, keep them isolated from the rest of the world. We won't teach them how to use fire. We, won't, we definitely won't teach them how to read. It'll just be, you know, here's how you plant things, here how you, here's how you water them, here's how you harvest them, uh, get her done. <laughs> we'll say uh, uh, half uh, half a pig and a half a cow twice a year that you can use to supplement your grain diet but beyond that we don't want to hear from you we just want to see the grain rolling in that's that's what we're after cruelty aside uh, everything that I'm doing here with the, the traffic is just kind of trying to keep it moving at the very beginning where it's not going to be too demanding um, making sense and also not trying to develop any bad habits with regards to the number of intersections that we're creating keeping that in the back of my mind as well and that's kind of part of this whole idea of doing things uh, modular so to speak is that you could have a small residential area that's only connected to the main artery in one point and is completely detached from the residential areas around it or any other kind of zone for that matter except for that one connection point to the main artery because that way we can kind of keep track of what's going on in that specific area for traffic and if they need more attention because they're all trying to get into or out of that area from the main artery then we can look at that at that particular connection as opposed to having these great spread out zones of mixed uh, you know type you know, industrial commercial residential and eventually reaching a point where you've got so many different vehicles trying to go to so many different places and you're trying to isolate the areas where you need to make it easier for them and you put in all this work for an area that's only 10% of the problem it would be nice if we could kind of fix that so that it's uh, not quite the, the same nature of the problem. This is another thing that I wanted to switch up a little bit was with the buses and I started doing this with the last city uh, but this is a great opportunity from the very beginning to set it up first of all is rather than having these great serpentine bus loops that go up and down and around and all over the place with one loop where it takes forever for the bus to get from one point back to that point if you're kind of following it along on the loop I set it up so that there's basically one tiny little loop around each block and then a larger loop that connects the larger parts of the, the town together. So you'd have, you could step out your front door and not have to walk far to find a bus stop and then that bus could take you to the bus that's on the larger loop that then goes and connects to the other areas that are on a larger loop so that you can get anywhere you want to go it's just a much more organized and streamlined kind of way of making things happen i haven't had an opportunity to really observe it too much yet to see if it's making that much of a difference the idea is i want to um, first of all keep an eye on how many buses are in a particular area at a given time right now based on the demand it seems like there's only one bus per block for the most part which is fantastic but also manage those things so that one that we were looking at the bus stop we were looking at in this the last city where a bus pulls up and there's tons of people at the stop and a bunch of people get on the bus and then the bus leaves because it's full and you've still got a bunch of people left at the stop and it's forever before another bus comes around to pick them up there's always a backlog so that was one of the things that i wanted to keep an eye on 
if it doesn't work with this method, we can we can basically tune a few things with it. Uh, if it still doesn't work, then there's some other minor changes that we make. But the concept is going to be very concise, uh, very compact sort of bus systems to reduce the overlap and, and the lead time between uh, cycles, so to speak. That, if I were saying that out of context, that would have made absolutely no sense to anyone. So if it didn't make sense to you when I said it now, don't feel bad. It was uh, it was a really odd selection of words that I chose. You see, we're, we're kind of getting to the end of what I was uh, working on for this episode, which was just the, the residential demand is through the roof. So we're trying to get a handle on that by zoning more space for it. I'm going to keep on doing this. We're going to record it as I go, and then we'll do another two or three episodes, depending on how things come together, just showing how the city expands while we get ready to do things the way that we want to do them. And then we'll take start taking more detailed looks at the different things that I'm setting up and all that other stuff, and probably keep doing the time-lapse stuff as well, just so that you know things that might tend to drag on don't have an opportunity to do so. So if you want to be notified about those videos, you can subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Social media links are always in the information box below the video. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.